Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Got a little bit more graph theory for you today. We're proving a corollary of the well-known result that a graph is bipartite if and only if it has no odd cycles. If you're not familiar with that theorem and its proof, check out my lesson on it. I'll leave a link in the description. Pretty important theorem, um, and so we're going to use it to prove a pretty simple and neat result. We're going to show that for a graph G with at least five vertices, at most one of G or G complement is bipartite. They can't both be bipartite. So let's say we've got a graph G with a vertex set V and an edge set E. We're assuming that G has at least five vertices. So the cardinality of the vertex set is greater than or equal to five. We're claiming that at most one of G or G complement, the complement of G, is bipartite. The only way that this is going to be false is if both G and G complement are bipartite, because we're claiming that at most one of them can be bipartite, which is a tough word to say if you say it over and over again. So to prove that the theorem is true, or prove that the corollary is true, all we need to do is assume that G is bipartite and show that if that's the case, G complement can't be bipartite. And that proves that at most only one of them can be bipartite. We don't have to uh, address sort of both cases, like assuming G is bipartite and then assuming that G complement is bipartite because they relate to each other in the same way. G complement is the complement of G and G is the complement of G complement. Uh, so it's arbitrary which one we assume is bipartite. They both relate to each other in the same way. Same arguments will work uh, no matter which one we assume is bipartite. It's kind of a meaningless choice. So the strategy is we'll assume that G is bipartite, and then we're going to show that G complement can't be bipartite. Let's take a look, uh, more of a concrete look at an example, which is really going to instruct us on how simple and easy the proof is going to go. So the reason the graph needs to have at least five vertices is so that one of the partite sets, at least one of the partite sets, will have at least three vertices. So here's an example of what our graph G could look like. It's a bipartite graph with at least five vertices. So at least one of the partite sets has to have at least three vertices. Now by definition of a, of a bipartite graph, the vertices in that partite set, none of them are adjacent, which means in G complement, they will all be adjacent. Every pair of them will be adjacent. Then we get an odd cycle. Since there's an odd cycle, the complement cannot be bipartite because of the theorem. Uh, like I said earlier, a graph is bipartite if and only if it has no odd cycles. So if we do have an odd cycle, graph can't be bipartite. So that's the strategy of the proof. That's why we need at least five vertices, so that at least one of the partite sets has at least three vertices, so that we're going to get an odd cycle uh, in the complement. We're going to get an odd cycle in the complement. All right, let's jump into the proof. I'll uh, erase this or G complement, not really important. So we got a graph G. It's got at least five vertices. We're assuming that G is bipartite. And we're going to show that the complement cannot be bipartite. That's what we're going to do. So since G is bipartite, uh, it has two partite sets, V1 and V2. Let's call them that. We'll say that V1 and V2 are partite sets of G. And again, we know that these partite sets exist because G is bipartite. So it must have these two partite sets so that no pair of vertices in V1 is adjacent in G and no pair of vertices in V2 is adjacent in G. Then we need to make an argument about how many vertices are in these sets. What do we know is a lower bound for the vertices in these two partite sets? Certainly, since the whole graph has at least five vertices, at least one of these partite sets has to have at least half that many. So let me, let me write that. The cardinality of V1 has to be greater than or equal to half the number of vertices in the whole graph, or the cardinality of V2 has to be at least five over two because the whole graph has at least five vertices. 
if both of these partite sets had less than half of five vertices, if they both had less than that, Together, they would have fewer than five vertices, which would mean the graph has less than five vertices, which it doesn't. So, at least one of these partite sets has at least five over two vertices. Doesn't matter which, which we assume does. So, without loss of generality, let's just assume it's V1. So, I'll, I'll actually just erase this part. We'll assume that the partite set V1 has at least five over two vertices. Five over two is equal to 2.5. So since uh, the cardinality of V1 is greater than or equal to 2.5, uh, and the cardinality of V1 has to be an integer value because you can't have fractions of vertices, we actually know that the cardinality of V1 has to be greater than or equal to 3 because that's the, uh, you know, the next integer value that's greater than or equal to 2.5. So again, since the cardinality of the partite set V1 is at least 2.5 and it has to have an integer number of vertices, that means it actually has to have at least three vertices. Then we're nearly at our result. I'll just switch colors for the fun of it. Since V1 has at least three vertices, we're going to use that information to construct our odd cycle in the complement. So we know that V1 has at least three vertices. Let's name three of those vertices. So let's take vertex little v1, little v2, and little v3. These are elements, three distinct vertices of the vertex set. Then using these, we can very easily point out an odd cycle in the complement. Because in the complement of G, each pair of these vertices will be joined by an edge because they all come from the same partite set of G. They all come from V1, which means in G, none of them are adjacent. No pairs of these vertices are adjacent in the graph G, so they'll all be adjacent in G complement. So here is our odd cycle. We could start at V1, then go to V2, then go to V3, and then return to V1. This is an odd cycle in the complement of G, in G complement. Again, we know V1 has at least three vertices, so we're able to take these three distinct vertices from V1. No pairs of them are adjacent in G because they come from the same partite set, and so each pair of them will be adjacent in G complement. So we know that V1 will be adjacent to V2, which gives us that edge there. We know that V2 will be adjacent to V3 in the complement, which gives us that edge there. And we know that V3 will be adjacent to V1, which gives us that edge there. That's a total of uh, a length of three in this cycle. So it's an odd cycle. And again, that is in the complement of G. And you can check out my lesson on complement graphs if you need a quick refresher on what they are. But uh, remember in a complement graph, wherever there was not an edge in the original graph, there is an edge in the complement. So that's how we're able to know that we can create this cycle, or rather that this cycle exists in G complement. And that basically completes the proof. There's an odd cycle in G complement. So by that theorem uh, that a graph is bipartite, if and only if the graph has no odd cycles, since G complement has an odd cycle, G complement is not bipartite. G complement is not bipartite. And thus, if we've got a graph if we've got a graph G with at least five vertices, at most one of G or G complement can be bipartite. If one of them is bipartite, we've shown here, the other one cannot be bipartite. That's the corollary or the theorem. Really, it's just a corollary. So, hope this helped you understand the proof. I think number one thing I'd like to get better at in these lessons is uh, finding more time to take breaths. Anyways, uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Lots more fun graph theory proofs coming your way. I'll see you next time. Be sure to subscribe to the swankiest math lessons, the most winded math lessons on the internet. I can hear your voice from all the way up here, dear. Won't you please come to me? You love it up here, dear. There's a light where I float that erases all. It makes everything